Hey guys, welcome back. We got some Project F work going on today. We're going to be starting welding up the full turbo kit. We finally received from AHP our new welder. So this is it, the AHP 203 XI Alpha TIG. So this guy here is such an awesome unit. It's a TIG welding machine. It's pretty really budget because we were kind of burned once with the MTS 165 that we bought here. This is like kind of a huge combo deal. So it has a MIG and TIG function. It was advertised as being able to weld aluminum, but uh, while it can technically do that, not it can't do it with the TIG. Also, the TIG is a scratch start, which is really, really bad. Just not easy to work with. This is high frequency. You can also set it to lift. It's got dual functionality. It comes with some really awesome parts. It comes with Nova, pedal and torch which a nice, with a nice swivel head. This is a big old cup that I bought for it since we're welding up stainless. And what really sets this thing apart is, like I said, the price. I got this for about $800 and it has so many features that it just is so usable. It comes with features that you'll only find on machines that are like thousands of dollars. So that's a really get big plus. One of my favorite features is the pulse feature since it makes welding stainless exhaust so easy. I wanted to start practicing on it. Uh, we didn't have much scrap steel, and I thought the best part to test on would be Project F's downpipe, because if we mess it up, it'll be kind of the easiest to fix, but uh, really ran into no problems. Um, there was four, I guess total five welds on here. Each of them I was kind of just setting and dialing the, the, set, the settings on here. So the newest ones that which came out the best was this one and then the one for the flange itself. So this thing is really awesome. I've learned a lot with it too. And now that I've completed the downpipe here, which unfortunately I didn't really record any of it. I did post on Instagram. So if you want to follow us on Instagram, it's at Jury Rig Garage. You can see stories and stuff. I'll post stuff, you know, behind the scenes here and there. I did show some of the process of this, but now that I know I can weld on stainless, I'm going to go ahead and start working on all this. First thing that we're going to need to do is kind of just take it apart. We'll take the turbo off, we'll unbolt the V-bands, and I think I'm going to start with the manifolds and kind of work in. So the manifolds, we have a couple spots here. We have, this is like inch and seven eighth that goes to two and a quarter, two and a quarter to the V-band. Once I have that welded up, you know, both sides, we got this side, that'll be all good and secure. Then we can start working on this. There's a lot of different, you know, complex parts to this, I guess. We're technically not even done yet because we need to recirculate the wastegate into the downpipe. But uh, we're waiting on steel for that. But the rest of this really can just get all fully welded up. It's all stainless steel, and if you know anything about welding stainless steel, uh, it's really susceptible to warping with a lot of heat. So the pulse feature on the Alpha TIG is really, really useful for preventing that. It basically is a function that while you're welding, it'll turn on and then turn off, and while it's off, you can move to your next spot, turn on, turn off. It just really lets you like stitch it together, I guess. I'm using some stainless filler here, some ER308, 308L, using 0.45. Pretty good for welding exhaust here, so. Also have some uh, Tillman leather Kevlar gloves for the TIG. It, I feel like it just gives me a lot more dexterity holding the filler rod in the torch, and it really does protect from the heat super well, even though it's super thin, so very nice. We're also gonna go ahead and clean up everything with the wire brush and acetone it before we start because we want a clean surface. Another really useful tip I have is all your tungsten, which I'm using 2% lanthanated. I would take all your tungsten, cut them in half, and then grind both sides. That way when you're using it, if you, you know mess anything up, you can just easily flip the tungsten and then if you fuck up both sides, you can just pick up a bunch of stuff that's already sharpened. I have a dual regulator here for back purging the exhaust because we want the exhaust to be, you know, very nice and also strong. Because if you back purge, which means you fill the whole cavity with uh, argon, it will create a stronger weld. It'll also look a lot better. You won't see any sugaring in there. You can kind of see inside. Let me see if I can get a good, maybe I'll just take a photo and show you guys, but you, you can clearly see inside that because since I back purge this, the weld looks pretty nice on the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and just start taking this apart and we'll have it on the bench to start. All 
All right guys, just about to start welding. I got the driver's side manifold here. You can see there's a hole here that we blew through accidentally on the old welder because it just blasts it and stuff. So now with the high frequency, we should not run into that problem really at all. Uh, I will have to fix that clearly. I think I'm just going to get some of the filler rod here, maybe cut up a bunch and just kind of like fit over it. Just hold like a couple strands there and I think that should fill it or, you know, <laughs> make it work. That's kind of my best option here that I can think of. I'm using about 15 to 20 CFH of Argon. Oops. I'm going to open the valve. And then this is the cool feature here. So right now I have pre-flow for just under a second. Post-flow is four seconds because you want to cool the tungsten and the weld a little bit after with the gas, uh, after you're done welding. And then start amps 30, end amps five, and I'm running at 65 amps. You hit that, that brings up the pulse function. So right now I have it pulsing every half second. And on percent, it's 50%. I'm gonna turn that up to 60, I think. And we should be good to go. I might need to turn that amperage down just a little bit, but we really shouldn't have any problems with that. I'm going to first start by adding probably some more tacks, just working on either side because I don't want to warp it. I don't want to get it too hot. Might even just let it cool down extensively and then work on, you know, the other manifold. Just don't want to warp it at all. Our guys did some uh, welding. I had to cut for a second. I did blow a hole in one, but that was just entirely because I was at a bad angle, uh, but I filled it up. But as you can see, that looks really good. It got some actual color in it, which is pretty neat. Um, all of it, yeah, it's really nice. I don't, you can't really see much in there. We'll have to clean that up. I didn't get the, the back purge set up. There's a lot of ports on this thing. And Honestly, it does take up a lot of gas, but uh, I mean, the downpipe has been totally back purged, so that'll be free flowing. I don't really think it matters so much for the hot side or the turbo. Well, it's still hot side, but the, the manifold side. But uh, some of this pieces will probably go back and not go back, but those pieces back purge. I did add some tacks all around the top here, so to kind of mitigate the warping, but I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. I did also get a little bit on the V-band. You can see the color all pretty. And all the color goes away if you wire wheel it, but I kind of want to leave it on just for now, not wire wheel it because it looks so pretty. All right, guys, the uh, driver's side manifold is completely done. I think some of the last welds on the V-band came out the best. I mean, you can see tons of colors. There's some red right there. That's pretty cool. Some purple. I'm seeing some greens, gold. Very pretty. So uh, I know that color or whatever isn't really super important and might be not good. I don't know what the deal is. People like the color, though, and I like the color, so... I think this came out pretty well. I did have two holes to fill because, or maybe even three. 
So one that was already on here and then two that I created myself because I had, it was just bad torch angle. I just, this is really hard to work with when it wants to fall over and stuff. I could use the vise, which I'll probably go and do for the other stuff, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up and then we can, there's some sugaring on the inside because I did not back purge this. I can just take the rotary grinder and just kind of clean that up, but everything's all good on this thing. I kind of want to bolt it back up and just see how it fits. Obviously lots of heat got onto it, so don't want it to have warped. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and test, test fit it, I think. All right guys, got the V-bands back on. This one worked just fine. Uh, we've already, like, basically since we've set this, had a little bit of unalignment with it, uh, especially with this bellow, and that's kind of the reason. It's not a rigid pipe, and it has some movement, so this basically just needed to be moved into space here, and then we were able to uh, just get it down with the impact there. But, uh, yeah, that look, that's all done. So this section is complete. My next step is I'm going to do this, which I have two holes to fill. I hate filling those holes. But one weld on this, one weld on that. Then the manifold side is pretty much done. Then it's just the front piping side. I'll be taking them, taking them, you know, one at a time. Probably starting working towards this way. There's only weld that, one weld there. Wastegate stuff like that. And then kind of the hardest part I imagine is going to be doing the uh, flange to the pipes, as we don't really have a lot of room to get in there. But uh, We'll be able to make it work with the Alpha TIG, I think, no problem. The rest of these, I imagine, is going to be super easy. This one just had a lot of, a lot of welds to do and kind of a tight angle. I'm sure, I'll have similar issues getting in to here, but uh, this whole thing is just going to be a war of attrition. It takes a long time to do all this, so I'm gonna go ahead and start on that side, and uh, we'll be back. Alright guys, just finished up with the passenger side manifold and this one really got me a little bit. Unfortunately, um, we had that giant hole like I had showed you before. Uh, we had one giant hole and one small hole. So I had to fill those and I kind of came up with a little bit of a technique just using like very minimal power and just adding filler and kind of stacking it over it. So I did that and then kind of grind it down and then I added an extra bead all around. So I mean you can see that, that's all good looks really ugly and really unfortunately my best welds are on the bottom of the manifolds or you're not going to be able to see them like so well uh obviously it's gonna be upside down it's gonna be on the opposite side of the uh you know it's on the bottom of the manifold so that's kind of unfortunate but i did get some pretty good welds out of this overall i really like the colors it's really nice but uh yeah i checked everything all looks good now I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool down and we're going to test fit it and i think i'm gonna be done for today just want to uh that was some good practice for that. And then we have the rest of the, the you know, the manifolds over there. And that's really the last piece there, which is going to be somewhat the most intricate. And uh, that one, I don't think I really have any holes blown in it. So hopefully I won't run into any problems. The reason this came out so ugly is because I had to fill those giant holes. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool down and I'm gonna test fit it. All right, guys, got it on. It did feel like it was a little bit tighter, but I mean, that's kind of just to be expected given that there's going to be some warping in it. But all bolts up just fine. We do need a different V-band for this side because this is a two and a half inch V-band and the V-band that's actually on there is a two and a quarter. We just actually ordered the wrong one. So we just want the perfect fit. You can see these welds came out really well. This one is a kind of poopy one. But now both those manifolds are done. All that's remaining is the V-band here, the bellow where it connects to the collector on this side and then the wastegate piping and then I guess the actual wastegate piping here with the pie cut and stuff but all this should be really easy I really wish I had just waited until I got my welder to put this together because 
the previous welder was just very hard to control and it would just blow those holes in there. Uh, all these welds would have come out way better had that not happened because the ones where I didn't have any, you know, holes or anything like that, those welds came out perfect. And uh, I am not an experienced welder. I've literally just been teaching myself in the garage with the previous unit there, which sucks, and had done no real welding at all, and this stuff's coming out perfect. perfect. So very impressed with the AHP Alpha TIG. And if you're interested in getting one of these, check out Alpha or AHP's website. They have a lot of deals going on right now. And I believe they do have units in stock, so uh, hit them up if you're interested in getting one of these. Alright guys, it's been a couple weeks, but I just wanted to do an update and just finishing out this video. The uh, whole turbo kit here is basically done. There's only one extra thing that we need to do, but as you can see, all the welds are completed. Um, I think with the footage I recorded several weeks ago, uh, I was still, you know, just trying to figure out some of that stuff. That's why the manifolds were not super great with uh, those holes that were already in there from the old welder but the rest of the kit came out super nice all the other welds are good and strong especially i was concerned with like the flange and where the collector comes in also our wastegate but those came out really nicely i mean you can see how nice those welds came out also where we had cut the old wastegate off of i got this patched up this came out super nicely I guess really all that's left is finishing up the wastegate here. We're just waiting on another uh, UJ from Vibrant, two and a quarter inch. We have another Vibrant Bellow that's going to go right here because this will expand at different rates as the downpipe. We're going to recirculate it into the downpipe here, which will be awesome. But uh, really the HP 203XI did a phenomenal job. It's just such a great welder, and so for the money, it's like, I don't know how you could beat that, really. Also did some testing on some aluminum. I was trying to figure out some of the settings, so I just cut up some of our aluminum intake here. Some of these welds aren't great just because I was figuring it out, but right here I got a really good couple inches of weld there, so that will be perfectly fine now that I have the welding for aluminum figured out. We'll be able to make an aluminum intake for it. Might do some cool things with our air to water intercooler right here. Might have like the wastegate right off one of the chambers instead of the pipes just to clean things up. We'll definitely be welding the way or the blow off valve to the intake. But once the wastegate is all welded up together, the, the recirculation of that, this thing's just ready to go back in the car. Uh, I got the coils coil brackets mounted, so I made a bracket off of the fuel rails for the L67 fuel rails. So this is very easy and serviceable. You just take off these two nuts. The bolts are basically welded in. They're studs and just lifts off. Now that I have a welder that I can actually do things with, it's really cool. These little fabrication things that can be done, you know, like the coil brackets. We had no real good solution other than mounting them somewhere else. But now we have in a relatively sock location just because we have a welder. All right, guys, that's going to do it. This whole thing's been a huge learning experience for me with welding. Very excited to be able to start getting into this level of fabrication and more. You know, we got a lot more planned. So uh, if you liked the video, leave a like down below, comment, and subscribe to the channel.